And so basically what we see is that it's absolutely possible that some unemployment remains, although the rocketing cost is zero, although the frictions have uh, disappeared. So the key finding here is that uh, it is possible that the level of unemployment is positive even when uh, the rocketing cost goes to zero. So in a case like this, you have some unemployment, although the matching frictions are not a problem at all. Okay? So it means that if you want, <coughs> there is some unemployment that comes from somewhere else than the matching friction. And where does it come from? Well, we can see here, it comes from the fact that the labor demand uh, is less than the size of the labor force when there are no recruiting costs. So it comes from the fact that even when recruiting is free, firms do not want to hire all workers in the economy. So even when matching frictions vanish, firms do not... And so matching friction vanish, it means that recruiting is free, basically. Uh, firms do not want to hire all workers in the labor force. And so what does that mean? It means that there are just not enough jobs for everybody. So there is a lack of jobs in, in the economy. That lack of job is what we call in, ma in macroeconomics a job rationing. Okay, so here there is, there is job rationing. And in fact, um, in fact, that quantity of unemployment that we've determined here. The amount of unemployment that prevails when matching frictions are zero is what we call rationing unemployment. So all of this, <coughs> this is what we will call rationing unemployment. It's a type of unemployment that comes from the lack of job in the economy. And here it, it arises because although recruiting is free, firms do not hire everybody. So this is rationing unemployment. And so the formal definition of rationing unemployment, you know, it's the amount of unemployment that would prevail even if recruiting uh, was free. So it's basically rationing unemployment. The definition is. You can say it's U, and usually we put it, we put a um, superscript R to denote rationing unemployment. It's going to be H, the size of the labor force, minus the labor demand at theta when the recruiting cost R is equal to zero. Right. So basically, the gap between the amount, and in fact, we know that that labor demand doesn't depend on theta. So it's a gap between the amount of workers in the labor force who want to work and the labor demand when recruiting is uh, equal to zero. Now what's very interesting is the following. So what is the labor demand when R is equal to zero? We've just derived it, right? We've said that it was, if I go, it was this alpha m1 minus gamma omega 1 over 1 minus alpha. That's what we've just showed. Uh, now the question is, so this is our labor demand with no rocketing cost. Now, let's go back to our standard labor demand, the, the one with just some positive recruiting cost. That's the one that we've been using all along. Okay. 
right? So this is when the Euclidean cross is positive, that's what we have. So let's look at these two things. What do we notice? Well, the key thing, you remember that when theta is equal to zero, what do we have? We know that when theta is equal to zero, we know that tau theta is equal to zero. Okay, so we know that one plus tau of theta alpha is equal to one. Okay, so what do we learn from this? Well, we learn that the labor demand when theta is equal to zero and we have some routing cost that's positive is exactly the same as the labor demand when the cost is zero. So what do I learn from that? Well, I learned that the position of my, lab, of my vertical labor demand, that curve here, that position here on the x-axis is exactly the same as the intercept of my regular labor demand when I have a positive recruiting cost. Okay, so that's the key thing. What we learn from that result here is that the labor demand when r is equal to zero, so the one I've just plotted with that vertical, which has its vertical shape, and when r is positive, in which case the labor demand is downward sloping, the standard labor demand that we've studied, they have the same, they have the same intercept with the x-axis. You know, when theta is equal to zero, these two curves have exactly the same intercept, and you can see it here. When theta equal to zero, the two curves, uh, the two labor demand are the same. Okay? So it means that if I wanted to plot here my regular labor demand, it would look like this. So we know it starts at some value theta n and then it goes down like this. And it would have the, the same intercept here. So that's my labor demand when the routing cost is positive. And this one here is the labor demand when the routing cost is zero. And so what we see is that when uh, the routing cost goes to zero, Basically, what happens is that the labor demand rotates when the routing cost goes to zero, the labor demand is going to rotate around that point here, around that intercept that stays exactly the same. Okay? And so what that means is that, in fact, when I want to know how much rationing an employment I have in a regular economy, you know, in an economy without looking at what happens when the routing cost is zero, I can always know that the amount of recruiting unemployment you know, in a regular economy with a downward flopping labor demand, I can always read it, you know, here. It's always the gap between uh, the intercept with the x-axis and the size of the labor force. So that's always equal to my routing cost, that gap here. Okay, so basically, the idea is that if, at a, if when the tightness is zero, firms do not want to hire all workers in the labor force, then we know that there is a lack of job in the economy, we know there is rationing and unemployment. That's because when the tightness is zero, the routing, you know, although routing costs are positive, you know, you, it, it's so fast to fill vacancies that firms behave as if routing costs were zero. Okay? Uh, so in a standard diagram, I can always find the routing and unemployment by looking at the intercept of the labor demand with the x-axis. Okay, <laughs> and so this actually allows us to also answer another question, which is whether. Uh, <clears throat> so, what we learn from that, what we've just seen, is that rationing unemployment is also 
you will with H, the size of the labor force, minus the labor demand when theta is equal to zero. So minus the intercept of the labor demand with the x-axis. That's another equivalent definition. And so a natural question that comes up here is uh, whether rationing unemployment is always, you know, always positive uh, in, a, in our model. So in a, in a model with a rigid wage and a downward sloping labor demand. Do we always have positive rationing unemployment? The answer is no. The rationing unemployment may be positive, but it doesn't have to be. It can be zero sometimes. 